the idea that I was going to buy the land that we were going to farm instead of renting it. Because when you rent the f land, you don't know who's farming it next year. The person you're renting it from, the landlord, may decide you're not going to have it next year. And so if you set up your farm operation based on a certain number of acres, uh, and then all of a sudden you don't have those acres, that's a problem, you know? Yeah. And so uh, you have a lot more expense in buying the land. Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, a lot more expense in buying the land. But uh, we were able to buy land back in, oh, what was it, 85, 1983 and 85, land was real cheap. Yeah. And so we were able to uh, buy some of that land at fairly low cost, you know, comparatively. Now, it still cost a lot of money, mm -hmm. and we still had to borrow money to buy it, but then we knew we had it. Yeah. And then as the price of land went up, for example, some of the stuff we bought was as little as $740 an acre. Okay. Right now, the land is selling for $12,000 an acre. Woo. So the stuff we bought at $740 an acre is essentially worth $12,000 an acre. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. And so by buying it back then and the price going up, you, you know, you have equity in that land. Yeah. And so uh, that has proved to be uh, a, very, a very good thing. Now, I sat down with the banker and I explained to him that to rent land, I would be paying almost as much money as I'm paying him in interest for the money we borrow. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense. Now, what happened in 83 and 84 and 85 was people had bought land for, you know, more than the $740. They had bought it for like four or five thousand dollars an acre which you know doesn't seem like a lot but then when the value of land dropped to well for example the guy that we bought the land from he had gone out of business went bankrupt because he had bought it for four thousand and now it was only worth seven hundred forty dollars an acre yeah and so you know it was a bad decision you know uh you know looking at it in retrospect afterwards it was a bad decision yeah for him <clears throat> but i think uh overall i think that was uh, one of the smarter moves we made was to start out with that attitude that renting my dad had a saying he said once a renter always a renter and if your mom and dad had decided to rent houses for you guys to live in they would still own nothing and now they've got a house that they own yeah so in my opinion that's that's smart yeah. you know so even today we just found out that jordan just bought a house Really? Yeah. <laughs> How about that? Now he's got to get a family to put in there. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you think? Yeah. So, but that's uh, now the other the other question he asked: What was a what was my dumbest decision? Yeah. Um, but I got to think about that for a little bit. Um. Having five kids and 15 grandkids, is that a bad decision? <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, 
I, I think probably uh, I, you know I just don't know um, let me get Susie involved in this see okay. what she thinks okay okay just a second The temperatures come up. It's almost above zero now. Hey. So. That's warm yeah. for what you've been having. Yeah. Well, at least we're not getting the rain. So. Yeah. Um, but. So this is this is your homework project, huh? Yep. For grammar. For grammar. Yep. Okay. It's... You are you writing this stuff down so you remember it? Yep. Okay. Good. Good. Um. Miles needs to know. Miles is on the other end. Yep. Miles needs to know what is our dumbest decision we ever made for fun. Together? Huh? Together or you or myself? Well, together because we're kind of married. <laughs> What's the dumbest thing we did? <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> building buildings too small. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, did you catch that? No, what'd she say? That when we were building a building, we made it too small. It looked so big, but everything is getting bigger and bigger. But <clears throat> to me, you also have to pay for it. You yeah. know, you can't just say, oh, I want a huge building. You, know, you have to, you have to have the money for it too. But it seems like every time we build something, it seems like we could use just a little bit more space. Like, you know, Papa's truck can't fit in the garage. Hmm. We thought we'd be able to fit a, a tractor in there so that he could work on it in the winter when we didn't have the shed. But the truck won't fit in there. Yeah. And so, um, all, guess, all of the buildings, for example, uh, Miles, when I built that brown kind of a machine shed out there, yeah, I didn't have you know, anywhere near the amount of tractors to fill it. Yeah. And now, now it's completely full. Well, and now it's just your auxiliary. <laughs> yeah. It's but like it's, a storage shed. It's, it's a storage shed. But at the time we built it, uh, it looked way big, you know? Yeah. And, uh, uh, everything, everything, you know, has grown so much. Um, the size of the tractors, the size of the uh, equipment that you pull behind it. And for example, the uh, the machine shed I was talking about, the one there right north of the house here. Yep. Um, if I go to back my uh, uh, field elevator in there, I actually have to lower that about four or five inches so that it makes it in the door. And of course, when I built it, I didn't have anything that that big. Yeah. My my biggest. Yeah, Susie's right. Our biggest. Uh, you know, even the uh, when we built the house, of course, that was different. When we built the house, um, I had a loan from the bank to build the house, okay? Yeah. And the bank went bankrupt. Just before we were going to, about five days before we were going to start building. Hmm. So uh, we had to scale things back because all of a sudden I didn't have a loan from the bank mm -hmm. to do construction. And... I, I redrew the whole plan, the whole layout and everything else and went out for bids again to figure that's what you do is you go out for bids to a plumber, yeah. to a plumber and an electrician and so forth and say, you know, here's the house, here's the floor plan. What, what's your bid for building it? Well, I drew the house about half the size of what it is now and went out for all these bids again and i was going to save you know um less than five percent of what the original plan called for and the guy the general contractor that i had at the time and he said well you still got to dig a hole you still got to have a basement you still got to have a water system you still got to have an electrical system and all these things and he said the fact that you're going to use 
30 feet less of electrical wire or something, uh, it isn't going to make that much difference. Yeah. And so we went back to the original design for the house, but then we cut the garage from a three-stall garage to a two-stall garage. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then Susie and I started doing the work. You know, she'd do the staining and varnishing and stuff like that, and I'd hammer nails. But everybody did. <clears throat> uh, Jenny and uh, Becky and Brian uh, and even Laura uh, helped with the building of it. Eric wasn't born yet. But, uh, your, mom was, your mom was only five years old. She was Eric young? Was yeah, your mom was only five years old when Eric was born. But anyway, uh, she would she would run, you know, pieces of lumber up to me and I'd hammer them in and whatever. But where I was going with all this is if you don't have the money to build the big house or you don't have the money to build a big machine shed, you, you cut corners. And sometimes it's, it's, it's silly because, uh, as the general contractor told me, you still got to do the basic. You got to have a foundation. You got to have certain things. And to make it two feet longer, even, and you know that doesn't seem like a big deal. Yeah. But you know what that garage is like when you bring a big Bertha in there? Yeah. It should be two feet bigger, shouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you guys, when, when you're getting in and out of that thing, you well, don't have any room at all. You know. That. Yeah. But so, the, I guess the biggest mistake we have made in the past is to not build things as big as they should be yeah. you know and you got to be looking you know that's true of any kind of business you got to be looking down the road not two years or three years but five years or ten years with okay a plan. with a plan but you you can't uh you can't base it on what you need today yeah because that's not enough it's not going to be enough Heck, We'd have put another bedroom on if I thought we were going to have five or six more kids. <laughs> right? Oh, that yeah. was one of the biggest, mistake, biggest mistakes Papa had was thinking there were going to be five or six more children. So. <laughs> but no, I, the, um, and, and the same thing, you know, I talked earlier about the smart thing we did was buying land. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I had to go back again, I don't have any regrets or any of the ones that we bought. Yeah. But I do have regrets, or like you said, a mistake for not purchasing a couple others that came available. And I thought at the time they were too expensive. Well, But you know, as I told you, when you go from $740 an acre for that first farm to over $12,000 an acre now, you'd have been better off to have bought some of those you know, but, hind, but hindsight too, you also can't, you can't leap when you, when you don't have, I guess that's one thing that scares me a little bit, Miles, is Papa is very, very good financially. He's very, he doesn't jump into things. Sometimes I think he moves too slowly with certain decisions, but he always, it ends up being the, usually the right decision because he's researched it where I would maybe jump in with excitement and say, oh, but we could do this and we could do that. We also, you know, knew we had five children that need to go to college, you know, and you have to look at, at that too. The biggest, I'd say the biggest advantage of being here is my growing up, if, you know, in the city I had, I mean, I had best friends on our street, just like you guys do, and, you know, all of that. But just as the kids got older, <clears throat> we needed to be somewhere where they could run and they could just have animals and, you know, all that. That was a good I was scared to death to move here. I really was. I didn't think I'd have any friends. I had friends in, you know, Minneapolis, good ones. And, you know, it, it's... I wouldn't change it for the world now, but I guarantee you the first time we drove in the driveway knowing this was going to be our, 
new home. <clears throat> I was I was pretty scared the first winter when Papa wasn't here. I wanted to go I wanted to go somewhere and not be here just because it seems so hard. And you know, this is a good life, but it's also it's you also have to work. And you do work, you know. So I guess I could go on and on, but I love where we live. So anyway. No, I guess uh, I guess I'll say that the, the one I the one I mentioned earlier about the smart decision uh, was buying instead of renting. Wait a minute! It was marrying me. That was the smart decision. <laughs> that, that'll, that'll get it, that'll get him an F in his oh, report, no, though. Oh no, that'll get it. <laughs> uh, no, but the smart thing was to, to to buy land and not rent it. Just like your dad bought the house, he's not renting it. Yep. And the the um, decision that if I could change it would be to uh, build things big enough to accommodate ten years from now. Yeah. Okay. Um, at least, yeah, we built some buildings and they're nice, and I'm glad we built them. But if I had to do it over again, I'd build them two feet longer. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but just think, Miles, when when you. Papa says don't don't rent, but just think when you when you're able to buy land, you have people want to rent from you. You be the landlord, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And you look and I look at that when Papa talks about renting. Aunt Barb owns her house. Uncle Doug does not. He has been paying rent there for how long? Twenty years. At least probably twenty years. Think of what think of what a waste that is. He doesn't own it, you know. He's just paying this other guy, and you know, it's one of those things where Papa says, you at the, know, at the end of the day, you don't own anything, you know. Mm -hmm. He's just paid rent, and he lived there, and now he's gone, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, you ought to have about twenty-five pages by the time we got done talking to you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I hope you were ready. You should have been recording. Oh, he yeah. You have you have a mind like a like a, a safe, right? Well, yeah. A steel trap. <laughs> well, t tomorrow I'm going to the vet. Two of the kitties have really gunky red eyes, so I'm gonna go get some medicine for their eyes. But other.